Hello everyone and welcome to Expert TV, brought to you by the Global Institute of Training and Presenting. Support, development and community for exceptional trainers, presenters, experts and workshop leaders. My name is Paula Smith and it is my pleasure to be your Expert TV host once again. We are really lucky enough to have Trisha Pye with us today and uh, Trisha is from the Tech Exec and runs her busy training practice from Sydney, Australia. So Trisha works with large organisations and individuals, in particular trainers, to help them with their online presence and she helps to take all that overwhelm away from you when it comes to technology. I always say to my clients, there is no magic pill in business, but after spending a bit of time with Trisha, I really believe that she is my magic pill when it comes to using technology more efficiently or just helping me as well as all of her clients to understand technology better, uh, especially getting the foundations ready in your business so you can use technology as your friend, not your enemy. So I'm going to introduce you now to Trisha. So uh, there you are. A big welcome to Expert TV, Trisha. Hi, Paula. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be here. So do you like being called the magic pill? Have you heard that expression before? Would you like to be the magic pill in technology? <laughs> I've heard it before, but I've not been called that before. But yeah, it's either the magic pill or we could try with Genie or something like that. <laughs> oh, Genie's, Genie's good. So uh, a big welcome. So uh, digital disruption, uh, it's a term that everybody uses at the moment. So um, I know you run a lot of workshops in digital disruption and help organisations and individuals uh, work out all their technology problems and, and to take those headaches away from them. So in a nutshell, what does digital disruption really mean? Okay, I'll start with something simple. Back in the olden days, we had this thing called a telephone book. The telephone book was the main way that we would connect with our customers, clients and family if we were looking for different phone, phone numbers. Nowadays, it comes down to how we search and communicate with others using the internet. So digital disruption was something that really did cause a lot of change back in 2012. The way that we communicate, the way that we shop, the way that we purchase, um, we've got things like eBay, all of those things that are there, the way that we can buy and sell on social media, all of those things come into digital disruption. But more so recently is digital marketing and how that has changed the face of business um, for teachers, trainers, small business, large business. Digital disruption has completely given the business an overhaul. Mm. And it changes every day, doesn't it? So every time I look around, you know, I'm something that I would buy uh, normally in a shop, it's now available online. Um, it, a, a nap that I might be using the next time I go to use it, it's been updated and looks a little bit different. So how fast is this um, digital changes or how, how fast do we have to, to go to keep up with all this change? Is that where you come in and help us? Certainly does and things can change daily, uh, particularly with social media. Um, uh, Instagram had a couple of big updates yesterday. Facebook, you would notice, has cosmetically changed quite significantly over the last couple of months. But technology in general, just in the way that we communicate using this and Zoom as an example, is, is one of the biggest changes on how we, as trainers and teachers, can communicate with our students. Mm. Now, talking about changes, uh, Google. Now, I heard a conversation the other day uh, with people who are in the technology industry talking about how all the rules have changed on Google. Uh, and for, for many people out there, we didn't know what the rules were in the first place. So could you perhaps shed a little bit of a light on why do we need to understand Google and what are some of those rules that have changed recently? Okay, without understanding Google, if we don't understand Google, we will be and can be completely invisible online. So Google, if we relate it to a website, uh, three, three tips that I can give you there would be one is to understand the difference between search engine optimization and search um, marketing. So it, it's all in the way that we ask questions. So if we were to type in um, blanket, 
we would get millions and millions of results on blankets. If we were to type in blue um, alpaca blanket, we would get, that's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> We would get many, many, we would get more limited results. So digital disruption and Google, Google changed it more so to make it fair for, for all to use the internet. So that if you follow the rules with relations to how questions are asked, Google will give you answers and other search engines like Google, Yahoo and, and those ones. Okay. okay, so what rules have changed recently? Has, can you think of something that's changed recently on Google that we need to be aware of? Yeah, we need to be aware of content. Okay. Google, Google loves fresh content and that's part of it being fair. But also too, it's, it's how we rank. So when we, we want to ask a question, we wouldn't just type in a word now. We would literally type in a question on what we're looking for. And what comes up when we're searching are articles and content. So it will actually give us, rather than a website, it will give us an answer that is related to the most suitable uh, content that's there or article. Mm. So when we're writing contents and articles, uh, maybe the headline should be an actual question. So would, would that be helpful? A question or something that others would ask. So that's what we need to keep in mind. Um, the way we search is, is aligned with what questions people are asking of the internet. Mm, yeah, that's a great tip. Now, for many speakers and trainers, we travel a lot. So we're always on the road. Um, and keeping up with technology on the road or running our business effectively when we're on the road and not in the office can sometimes be tricky. Now, every time I see you, you have this mobile phone attached to you. Oh, yes, you've still got it. And you seem to run your entire business uh, on this mobile phone. Uh, even today, uh, I know you've come into your Sydney office to, to do this on Zoom, but you said you didn't have to. You could actually be anywhere in the world and you could do this recording with Zoom on an app on your phone. And so, so that's pretty amazing. Yes. So you've got maybe three tips for trainers and uh, presenters or speakers um, so, or three apps that we might be able to use on the road to run our businesses. Well, this app here that we're using now, Zoom, is available on your phone. Now, you can then run a training session or a meeting with a colleague or a client from anywhere in the world, from a beach, from a classroom, from your own backyard, it doesn't matter. So technology, particularly with relation to smartphones, has really changed the way that we communicate. Um, other apps that we can use as trainers, the way that we store and present our information. So if we were, that, well, if I can go back in time where we would have a boot in our car full of paperwork, I don't know if anybody can relate to that. Mm -hmm. So you would have computers, you would have bags of folders that, and, and handouts that you wanted to give to your students. Nowadays you don't, it's very, very simple to store all of those through different apps that are on your mobile phone. That means that you can train from those files that are on your, or, or like keynote talks or presentations that are stored in the cloud. So the cloud is just a fancy term given to an online post office box that you can store all of your information in. Right. Excellent. And what about some other ways? Maybe recording devices. So a lot of trainers, they're, they're authors, so they're writing books, they're always coming up with great content and ideas. Uh, at the worst possible moments in time. So what app can we use on our mobile phone to say maybe capture our thoughts and, and email it back to ourselves or something like that? Okay, whether you're using Android or whether you're using Apple, these apps are their standard for you. It could be a simple download or with the Android, all of the Google apps are there. I use Google because one, they are convenient, they're there and they're cost free. So you don't have to download any expensive apps or any programs. So Google has a, a, a lot of great apps that you can use for free. Yes, yes. Right in the palm of your hand. Huh? Really in the world. Uh, so excellent. Okay. And now the lucky last one, social media. Now we're all running off to do Facebook courses or LinkedIn courses and Instagram courses. And, and sometimes they run quite independently and they don't talk about the other social media applications. 
Um, but you were talking the other day about how important it is for all these applications to talk to each other so people aren't just randomly posting, to have some type of strategy. So how do you get these things all to talk to each other? One is to actually learn about what is possible and what links to what. So if we were to use LinkedIn as an example, it automatically links to Twitter. So if you have a Twitter profile and that is relevant for you, they link together. Facebook also links with Instagram. So if you post on Instagram, you can have that automatically send over to Facebook. So that's great. It saves a lot of time and it's simple. Something though that is really important to keep in mind is to have a plan on why you want to use these programs and and you know have a purpose and i think we don't know what we don't know and without a purpose it's very difficult to reach the target audience that we want to reach mm. and i heard you're a bit of a whiz on facebook ads so oh, <laughs> um, we might not go into the facebook ad things today but uh, we're going to be really lucky we are going lucky at um, gitp because trish is flying over to perth for our next chat to meeting um, to talk to all of our members about the foundations of technology and how we can use technology more effective to run our business. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, and I believe the next day you're going to be staying around and running a half day workshop, which is going to be a real treat as well. Yes, yes so, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yes. So, um, so Tricia, thank you so much for joining us here at Expert TV and sharing some of those tips with us. And, uh, and I think technology is something that we can never stop learning. So every time I think I've just got my head around it, um, I need to go back and do a, a, another course or work with people such as yourself just to keep me uh, up to date with what's going on. So uh, the changes can positively, uh, positively affect my business and uh, so I can be more efficient, especially when traveling. So uh, Tricia, how can people get in contact with you? Okay, you can contact me on my website, which is the tech exec, so it's techexec.com.au or via the GITP website um, as a member. Uh, that's right, because you are an accredited member as well as GITP, so uh, Trisha's whole profile is on our website. So, uh, yeah, please do go and uh, visit the GITP website um, to find out more information about Trisha and also if you'd like to book into the next chapter event. So I'll say goodbye to you, Tricia, now. Thank you so, so much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you on Perth on the 28th of, of June. So I'm just going to say goodbye to uh, everyone uh, on the other end of the line. Thank you for joining us for Expert TV and tuning in, brought to you by the Global Institute of Training, um, Training and Presenting support, development and community for exceptional trainers, presenters, experts and workshop leaders. Um, I hope you'll join us again on the next episode of Expert TV. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.